abrasion here wear and tear on the bottom did not love these shoes at first they were super uncomfortable to the point where it made me bleed but as you can see i was able to fix it and i'm gonna share with you my secret on how i did that hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello my name is amy today's video is going to be my very comprehensive review of the hermes chypre sandals everything that you need to know about these sandals and whether you should buy them we're gonna talk about comfort sizing bunch of mod shots longevity for the fashion trend as well as the wear and tear actually and for some of us me included these shoes can really be super uncomfortable even though they're supposed to be comfortable and how i fixed that issue and i'm gonna show you exactly how my very first pair were these ones these are in the color natural and i bought these in 2021 followed by this pair in 2022. I bought three other pairs this year, so I have a total of five pairs. So these are my well-loved ones. These are my first pair. They were very, very uncomfortable in the sense that they were really, really scratchy to the point where it made me bleed. It's the part right here underneath. After I talked about that in one of my Q&A videos, a lot of you came forward and told me that you got the same issue. And so I was like, oh my gosh, nobody else talked about it, which is why I decided to do a whole video just about these shoes so that you can know everything about it but let's talk about the sizing first in general i am a true 37 and a half in ahmed shoes these shoes were so popular when they first came out they were always unavailable so the moment that they had a size that was close enough i bought them these are actually in size 37 and they were just a bit short for me my heel tends to be at the edge of the sandal so it's not ideal but these were my very first pair and they were sort of my guinea pig, so that's okay. This is also a size 37, but I bought them in different years. This one was in 2021, this one was in 2022. And if I put them side by side, more or less aligned, if you can see that. But the sandal in the 2022 version is longer, which is why I think in the earlier years, if you got these sandals, back then people would say to size up might as well compare the two other ones that i got this year so this one i got this year they're still brand new but this one is a 37 and a half aligning the bottom but the top they're exactly the same size might as well do the white ones as well so again the white ones are brand new i bought it this year the very bottom of the shoe they are exactly the same size even though this is a 37 and a half and this is a 37. all in all i want to say that you do have to try these on preferably because uh, not only do they tend to vary a little bit from season to season also the width and also how stiff the leather is from season to season this particular season where they kind of cut the leather slightly thicker i don't know if you can tell by me pressing it it's a lot firmer it bounces back a lot faster Faster. so this particular pair my newest pair will take a little longer I think to break them in this pair was definitely the softest when I first got them and you can even tell from the top leather here these ones are okay as well but they're slightly firmer than the brown ones and you definitely can notice that right here because if this part is stiff and harder it will take a lot more breaking in and a lot more of your ankle and feet action to soften this part as well as this part for your feet to feel comfortable walking long distance in them now let's take a look at this material which is a slightly different material this one is their suede as far as i know it comes in like a pink and green a pink this color which is the beige it's going to be a lot more comfortable because as you see the leather is softer to begin with and so everything will be a lot easier to break in even this part right here is already starting to buckle just from me trying and just bending the shoe in general i will say the suede version is probably going to be the easiest and the fastest to break in if you're looking for the ultimate comfort one so if you're someone who is able to break in shoes you may not notice a huge difference in comfort but if you're very sensitive you will find that the stiffer shoe takes a little longer to get used to i do think that they're slightly wide at the top but the saving grace is that you can adjust here the velcro part obviously it will depend on the anatomy of your feet it's not going to fit everyone because if you have very short toes i have a friend size four and a half it didn't fit her because her pinky was too short it would get caught up in this cut out here which is why i still recommend that everyone tries this shoe on but in general for me with my long toes it's actually working quite well and even though i don't have 
wide feet. I don't have narrow feet either. Even though it is slightly wide at the top, it's still very, very comfortable because it's completely adjustable here. As a last comparison, sizing wise, this one is all lined in the Teddy shirling material. These are size 38. These are size 37 and a half. If I just align the outsoles, so the outside soles, the very, very bottom of the sole, these ones are a lot bigger. You see where I'm going with the sizing, right? Depending on the model and how soft the leather is and even how wide that particular shoe is that particular season, you might have to choose a slightly different size. So with the Teddy version, they do recommend that you choose a slightly larger size just so that it accommodates your whole feet in it and still have a little bit of space in the back and in the front to show a little bit of that fur detail. Obviously, it's really up to you whether you need to size up even half a size like me. I think I would have been fine with a 37 and a half. Another thing about the fit of these shoes is that it does come with some sort of mold on the insoles. Birkenstocks have a more pronounced kind of arch support. These ones, they're a little bit less so, but there's still a little curve there, which I find them very comfortable. I think when they're too pronounced, like the Birkenstocks, it can sometimes irritate you especially. And also it is all leather lined. So over the long term, they are a little bit more comfortable when you sweat in them. Longevity wise, I think they will also be just a better material to wear and tear over time. The other part that might affect its comfort is the stitching underneath the leather. That is something that I brought up in my own videos and that I haven't heard anyone else talk about, which of course with my dry skin, it really isn't helping. My solution is I put a tape and this is not just any ordinary tape. This is a microfiber tape that I just tape all around the bottom here. So instead of the stitching part, which is right here, and maybe even the roughness of the edge of the leather, your skin is touching this really soft, nice microfiber. I'm going to show you two of the materials that I have. The one that I have here, I bought many, many, many years ago. More of a velvety texture. I use the big one right here, which fit exactly as it is right here. I'm not sure where you would be able to find the exact same thing, so that's not what I'm going to recommend. Instead, I also bought this very recently and I bought this on Amazon. This is a medical grade moleskin sticker, but it comes in a roll so you can just cut as you wish. I looked up a few reviews. It's from this company, Roland. It's multi-use, so apparently you can use it on your blisters and stuff like that too, which I haven't. I just use it on my shoes. This one has more of a fabric texture, but it's still a very thick sticker and it's still a moly skin sticker so i found both to be equally as adequate just had to cut it up myself and it's perfectly fine so this pair of sandals being the softer leather was already a bit more comfortable so less abrasive than the harder leather to begin with but it still has a little bit of stitching there and i'm very sensitive my skin is very thin and dry so even in the summer, walking back and forth and your feet moving around the sandal, it does irritate me. So even though this pair of sandal being the suede material already being softer, I still put a sticker there just to protect my skin. Obviously with the Teddy sandals, you don't need to put the tape underneath because it's already all covered in this nice fluffy material. Maybe it is a bit awkward that it is a larger sandal and because you don't get the traction when your feet is a little bit moist, it holds on to the sandal a little bit better as you walk more and as you warm up. So in a way, it holds up your feet in the sandal a bit more. With this one, I don't find it to be the case. So I would definitely think that these are more for, it's just for the fashion, right? It's just to look kind of cool, but I wouldn't consider the Teddy sandals in particular to be a walking shoe. They're really more just for lounging. This one you can walk a lot more and travel with. This one, I think it's more for lounging around walking a little bit, but not a whole lot, just because you really don't get that traction with your feet against this kind of material. Another thing that you might have noticed 
on how I also modify my sandals is that I added a little bit of that heel and toe protection on the sole. This is something that I've actually learned from a subscriber through one of your comments, so I don't remember who exactly. But I've started doing that on different types of shoes, especially the ones that have a leather outsole. But I also did it on the sheep sandals because even though the sheep sandals does have a rubberized or a plastic bottom, it tends to wear and tear quite quickly, especially if you under pronate or over pronate. So I over pronate, meaning that the wear and tear on my shoes is on the outer part of my heel. So right here on the outside of the heel. If you under pronate, it just wears out on the inside. So it doesn't wear out equally, which is a normal thing if you over pronate or under pronate. And so I just want to prolong the material on the bottom. You don't have to do it. That's just my tip if you want to just maybe grab one of these. There's safety walk tape for the shower but i don't use it for the shower i just use it for my shoes i don't add it to the whole bottom you don't need to because this material can feel a bit slippery too and so i don't want to add it to the whole shoe i just use whatever is needed to protect the toe part which usually wears and tears right at the edge and then the heel part especially for me um, the outer part tends to wear and tear quicker so I've also started doing a double layer on the outer part as you can see right here. I typically just put my shoe like that, I trace it around with a pen on top and I just cut it out. You can't even really tell, can you? I mean there's a little bit of a material you can see there's a little bit of material but after walking in them they're just gonna wear out a little bit and you're not even gonna see the edges. So. You can see there's a little bit of material, but from the top and when you're wearing the shoe, even from the sticker standpoint, the sticker that is right there underneath, you can't even see. But it really prolongs and also protects your feet in the long term uh, from the abrasion here and also in terms of the wear and tear on the bottom. Initially, I wore these sandals as is. It did wear off a bit of the tip on the toes and on the bottom rather quickly just within one time of wear and not even walking that far so i've only started to add the tape afterwards where over pronate this part is a little thinner and i just replaced this bottom part that's the beauty of this tape here is that you know every season when you're done with your sandals that one summer you can just change it and just rip off the old sticker and put a new one that way it will prolong your sandals a little longer because these cost a lot of money with the exception of running shoes i don't do it on running shoes i'm gonna be linking these two products in the description box you're free to buy the exact one or you can find a substitute from whatever brand that works out i haven't tried any other brand except these two which is why i'm able to only recommend these two all in all do i recommend the sheep sandals well, it depends, but my answer is leaning towards yes, even though there are some cons. The main pros is that they are a pretty aesthetically pleasing type of dad sandals. Definitely for vacation, for shorts, for mini dresses, uh, even flower dresses can work. It just depends on how comfortable you feel with the casualness of them. And of course, with the different colors, it does subtly change the way it looks. Black and white are sometimes a little harder to style just because black can be a bit jarring depending on the rest of the coloring of your outfit. White can be wonderful if you're wearing like a crisp white t-shirt, something to contrast with. The beige color tends to be a bit softer in a way, blends in with your skin a bit more. They have gone up in prices several times because ever since my first pair they have gone up two times in pricing so they are by no means cheap but they are still okay like if you can get a lot of wear out of them and if you can prolong the wear and tear like i am doing um they are worth it in that sense in terms of con the main one for me is that i'm a little disappointed that you know you would think that this sandal it looks really comfortable you would never have guessed that the stitching underneath and just the stiffness of the material can be so abrasive on your skin really did a number on me so 
I would say that's the most disappointing and almost traumatizing to the point where I thought I just wasted over a thousand dollars on these sandals. Definitely, if you're gonna buy one thing and one thing only, invest in some moleskin, mole skin, moleskin, I don't know how to say that word, but invest in some sort of tape like this. It's super, super helpful. This one, like I said, you get a whole full roll so you can use it on any different shoes. Another con of these sandals, if you had a shorter pinky, it might get caught up in this cutout here. If you have really, really narrow feet, I do wonder if it's too wide for you. From a styling standpoint and from the comfort standpoint, as long as you do this, um, they're really really good for me i get a lot of wear out of them and there's just something about the look of these sandals last but not least if you're wondering about my opinion compared to the chanel that sandals which i used to own but never wore and then i did end up selling them the whole feet is velcroed in right your whole ankle is in one place but to the point where some of these parts will kind of dig in into your flesh that kind of pressure on my feet with my edema is not really working out in terms of the bottom also the chanel ones had a leather bottom i think it will get a lot of wear and tear quite quickly unless you did also resole them obviously with these ones being plastic you don't really need to resole them but at the same time they do wear out quite quickly on the edges which is why i do this it's optional you don't have to do it and also the price difference the chanel ones are double the price of the almez ones so for me it was a no-brainer that these ones worked better for me because first of all my edema well there's no worries because these are slip and go and second of all that these being half the price i get two pair for the price of one of chanel so I kind of justify getting multiple pairs that way in a way and style wise they're very similar just a very good looking dad sandals I can't think of anything else that I haven't mentioned so I hope that this was helpful if you're still deciding on whether these are for you or maybe you do have these sandals but you're not wearing them because they are actually hurting you do this guys it will really save your feet <laughs> and also your sandals being worn and getting uh, the cost per wear let me know which one is your favorite out of my five pairs if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe i would love to have you back i also do a live stream every single weekend and you can also join my membership where you get more exclusive content thank you so much and i'll talk to you guys in the comment section bye